Playboy Cardi dropped a whole lot of red on Christmas, and there was so much hype behind this album because he teased it for over two years. So did it live up to the hype? For me, the short answer is no, but we'll definitely get into it because there's so much to talk about this release. Yeah, and guys, let us know your favorite track on Whole Lot of Red. Drop it in the comment section and let us know if it did live up to the hype. Um, in my opinion, no, it didn't live up to the hype uh, just because it wasn't the aesthetic I was expecting. But then again, you know, Playboy Cardi reinvents himself with every single album. And I guess maybe this change just didn't suit my ear as much as the other ones, right? And, you know, I'm not going to come on here and did what I did on my album review where, you know, I was slandering it and I was Saying this and that like i've had time to age with it um i think that there is qualities to grab out of it i just i i don't think that there's a lot of replay value for me in comparison to what was going on on die lit and self-titled right yeah, for me the issue is is that you know he hyped this up to be you know his masterpiece you know his work of art just because you know and since 2018 he's been teasing this and not only that but you know, he made the whole thing of like, I have a gift for you guys. And he dropped it on Christmas, which is a big statement. Not only that, but he had, you know, all those cryptic tweets. And he was really going all out with the album rollout. And, you know, not only that, but, you know, the album only sold 100K first week. So all that hype. And I feel like it didn't build up to what it should have. And yes, you know, 100K first week sales is a lot. But for the amount of hype and oh, promotion. definitely a lot. Yeah, I mean, look, Dialit sold, I think, 60K first week. But I'm just saying, I expected... So definitely an upgrade. I expected 200,000 first week. You expected 200K first yeah. week? But re regardless, for me, the issue was the fact that there were 24 tracks. So for me, pacing was a big problem just because it felt like I was listening to that album for like three hours straight. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a really long, long listen. And it was overdue because like... You know, it's not it's not that Cardi can't carry that. It's just like, why would you want Cardi to carry that? Like, his content matter is not, and at least in my eyes, not supposed to be that way. And like, we've been Playboy Cardi listeners now for over like five years, right? Almost. Well, we'll think about it. Maybe 2017 with self-titled and after almost that, five be, years. Yeah, almost and five honestly, years. And like, now the emotion is different with it because you know, yes, he is putting up really uh, a really different aesthetic and something that's completely you know in left field in comparison to what everyone else is doing and i gotta respect it like the whole you know the whole dark you know goth punk thing is really working out for him and you know what his aesthetic and his image it's just like is the music up to par anymore you know what it is for me is that it was a genius concept but the execution just wasn't it it felt rushed too. It felt really it, it, rushed. It, it, like a lot of a lot of songs were extremely repetitive, and I find like obviously like there was unique productions on it. Like there was definitely things like, you know, uh, the vamp beat was really nice, and you know I love that Kanye feature. I think that was really cool and as look, well. And but I, it's just like nothing really sticked out on the track list for me. Yeah, and you know I'll be honest. Like I'm actually a pretty big Cardi fan. Like his self title to me is one of the best trap projects of all time, just because it was super it was super innovative. His ad libs were amazing. The production styles that animated type of production from Pierre Bourne was unheard of before that. And like, I actually went to like, I, I've seen Cardi twice in concert. So like, I was a pretty big fan, but this was super disappointing just because, you know, his vocal performances were really, you know, not good. Yeah, it wasn't a good listen. It was that all. aggressive type of delivery that, that he was bringing out. And it just, it didn't sound fine tuned. But what I do have to appreciate about the album is the production. The production's fire. Production is absolutely incredible. I just like take young take take Playboy Cardi out of there and give that to 2019 Young Thug. It would have been a completely different conversation for me. And yes, obviously, like you know, Playboy Cardi didn't match up to his own production, but you know, as I mentioned before, his performance felt rushed, and I'm gonna stick to that. Like every song on the track list felt as if it was a one and done sort of thing, and then after that, boom, on to the next. Yeah. And that was the vibe that I didn't want to go with because you know, listen to a Playboy when listening when you're listening to a Playboy Cardi project, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be like you know, it's supposed to feel joyful. It's supposed to feel like you know, not quick, but like not you know, not too long. Like it was just perfect with those with those other two tapes, and then like you get this. And it's it's almost dreadful. And not only that, but you know, he chooses to have three features. He had Kid Cudi, he had Kanye West, and Future. And in my opinion, he got washed on all three of those songs. Like he oh, got absolutely. outperformed. Especially if you look at Go to the Moon, like he gave himself a less than thirty seconds to actually spit on that song. Like Kanye totally bodied him. I think Kanye just I, I think he just gave Kanye the spotlight. Yeah, said, he was on it. his mercy vibes. That was a crazy Kanye it verse. It was a really good it was a really good Kanye verse, as I mentioned before. And it's kinda like now where do we go? Because, you know, 
I want to hear new. I want to hear more stuff from Cardi. Like I'm not down for him to stop here and just fucking take another four years off. Like that wouldn't make sense for his career. Like a, a lot of his fan base is either questioning the album or they love it. And I'm kind of on the other side. Like I'm questioning it because it's definitely not up to par with what he was releasing before. It's definitely not up to par with what he was teasing in his snippets before. And you know you got to feel for him because a lot of the shit got leaked. But dude, come on. But what's, you know? what's interesting to me is that like the best songs in the album, in my opinion, are actually the ones that have kind of lighter and more bright instrumentals. So if you look at songs like Beano, Sky, Over, Slayer, those are the best songs in the entire album for me just because the instrumentals matched his performance. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, the production from our dealer and from everyone else who was involved was absolutely breathtaking. Like, I it was, was really amazed. Good. I was going, you know, from track to track. I'm like, this is super innovative. This electro pop kind of infusion with, with these, uh, these, these heavy drums is really working. And, you know, that was the saving grace of the album. That's what kind of, you know, made me actually get through the listen. But apart from that, I think that Cardi needs to kind of change his direction on the next one. Change his direction on the next one, but maybe make it more polished, right? Like, yeah. he could still be super unique and innovative like he always is. Like, we're not questioning that. But I think we're just questioning about the execution and, the, like, you know, the real the real time that went into this project. Because, yes, it was being te teased for two years, but the album felt like, as it like if it was, like, made in two weeks. And we were talking about it, that in our Discord. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the episode. Listen, we got a lot of stuff going on here at NFR. You guys could join our community by joining our Discord chat. It's absolutely popping. The link is going to be in the bio, guys. And listen, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and the notification tabs. We're doing daily content here at NFR Podcast. Thank you guys for sticking in and I'll see you on the next one.